Ooh. We've got a few people coming on. We haven't actually started. We're just sort of chitty chatting at the moment. Shooting the breeze. Shooting the breeze, indeed. So, what's Jim um, doing? I don't know, looking at his feet. Um, anyway, I've turned him off. What I'm going <laughs> to do is, I think, uh, formally, I'm going to tap my papers on the desk, formally announce this webinar open. Uh, webinars are not a thing that I do. I, I've, I've done quite a bit of DVD work over the years, but I'm always on the opposite side of the camera. Much happier on the opposite side of the camera. Uh, unlike Matt Turnbull, who may allude to his uh, previous um, career in, in television. But anyway, thanks for everyone for, for dropping on tonight. We have got, scanning down the list, we've got swimmers, we've got runners, we've got triathletes, we've got a PT, um, got Pilates coach, we've got some age groupers. Uh, we have got quite a nice group of people here. Um, so, what we thought today is we'd uh, just spend hopefully 30, maybe 40 minutes at the outside um, chatting about the lockdown situation, how it's affecting um, athletes from different backgrounds, um, talk a little bit about immunity and what have you. We've got a schedule to run through, but before I do that, I kind of wanted to introduce... Um, Firstly, myself, Mike Butterworth. Most of you know me, I think. Um, my background, a physiotherapist, qualified in 1990 or 91. I uh, worked for 15 years as a physiotherapist, um, then got sidetracked by DVD distribution and uh, production, uh, along with my wife, Lindsay Jackson, who produced Pilates videos. Um, back in the day, VHS videos, £19.99 from uh, HMV. Uh, they were the glory days, worked very well for us. Uh, but then YouTube came along and uh, basically uh, closed our business down overnight. Um, that was the point we aligned with a nutrition company called Forever Living Products. Been with them for about 13 years now. Of the last five of those years, I've been one of their uh, forever fit ambassadors, flying the flag for the um, the older uh, members of the the, the company. Um, so I'm approaching my 50th birthday in six months. Um, so I got into triathlon um, through Matt Turnbull. He's the tall one on the left of your screen. I'm the short one on the right. Um, Matt, do you want to introduce yourself and maybe give a little bit of background about you and our connection and maybe talk a little bit about that grainy photo that we've got on the screen just now? I've just, I've just looked at that photo then realised that, that there's six fingers open. I was like, why, we, why have we got six fingers open? Well, that's, that's it's five fingers and a thumb. It, five was, day, thumb. it was day five. It was day so that's, five. That's, right, that's yeah. I realised where that was then, actually. Um, yeah, yeah. My, name's, my name's Matt Turnbull. Um, my background is actually in theatre arts as a professional actor. Uh, back in the day, I um, became a teacher when I um, stopped training the boards and um, found triathlon in 2010 um, and became um, obsessed, besotted, whatever you want to say, um, and worked my way up through, through the ranks as an age grouper. Um, Got myself to um, European silver, um, national titles, uh, silver medalist at standard distance. Um, so, and, and I sort of did a lot of this um, working with uh, local coaches and things like that um, and realised that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to pursue my, uh, my dream of being a coach. Um, I had fantastic mentors around me. And I wanted to replicate that, really. I wanted to give back. Um, so um, in 2015, got my level two qualification. Um, and, and I just absolutely love that whole world of, of working with athletes and training and exercise and fitness and health. Um, I met Mike, um, and uh, I, was, I, was, I was actually my coach mentor that put me on to Mike as a, pot a potential um, business associate, which we, which we started out as business associates, me and Mike, but we are, we're a bit closer than that these days, I will say. I <laughs> um, we've, sort of, we've moved on from those, those days of you know, just being very formal and talking business. 
Um, and that was the, the, the forever living and, and working with nutrition products, specifically what I wanted to work with, um, um, the best products possible for my athletes. And that's how that relationship started. 2017 and 18, I got my uh, level three high performance qualifications in triathlon. Um, and now I sit up there with, with um, a, quite a, a small bunch of, of, um, of coaches in the country that actually have this, um, this, this high performance level um, three coaching qualification. Um, there will be more, but we were the first cohort, and so it's nice to, to sort of spearhead this new direction of, of um, elite level and high performance coaching. And I've loved every minute of it. Um, it's, it's been testing, uh, it's been tough, um, taking that as, a, as my professional direction and working with athletes now from first time, um, first time triathletes. There's, there's someone tonight that I've worked with as first time triathletes, taking them through the first uh, triathlons. And it's been an absolute wonderful for me to see them grow. People who thought of themselves as just swimmers and then become triathletes. And they're not just triathletes, good triathletes. Um, and that's been um, a wonderful experience for me. And then people like Mike, who, who haven't known how talented they actually are, and then over the course of three seasons, just smashing constantly every single barrier that's put to them. Um, like today, we learned the Mike for the first time in 30 years, is it, Mike, that you've, you've actually built them? 32 years have been running, yeah. Um, and, I, and I do, I, I can't help but take pride in that. I, I don't take, you know, I don't take any sort of thing away from what Mike has achieved, but it's wonderful. It made me smile from ear to ear to know that I've had a little hand in, in somebody reaching something um, so, so special. And I think that that's the wonderful thing that I see. And, and this is why I come on to things like this, because if there's some nugget of something that I can give, it's going to give somebody um, a step up, help them move forward, and whether it's a bit of nutrition or a, a coaching point. But even at the tender age of, of, of 40, 49, like Mike, there's still gains to be had. We can still move forward. We can still see ourselves as improving. Um, and, and I've got some experience and some knowledge to give. And what I think is wonderful is that looking down the list of people tonight is that this is obviously a forum for Mike and myself to talk about our experiences, but I absolutely, um, you know, uh, second the fact we've got people on the, on the call tonight. They've got absolute top-notch experiences and knowledge. Um, like, for example, uh, Lee Evans, a wonderful athlete in his own right, a uh, mine of information. I love listening to, to the depth that he can go into in elements of nutrition. So it's wonderful. These, and I'm learning all of the time. Um, had a wonderful conversation today with um, with James Simpson, um, uh, who happened to be out um, on his run while I was walking my dog today. So we uh, we socially distanced and had a good chat about athletics and pacing and how we get the best out of our training. And uh, he's the same age as me. He's 21 and he's, he's still improving, still improving. <laughs> and uh, he's hit he's hit times over the last over the last uh, three or four weeks that he was you know he would, he would never have hit six months a year ago. So he's improving all the time. So I know these people are on tonight to, to, to hopefully gain more, whether it's just motivation or whether it's a, a top tip. And that's why I'm here. So, Matty, can you um, explain what the five fingers and the oh, thumb right. are for? <laughs> forgot all about that, Mike. I forgot all about that. So, <laughs> uh, 2017, um, I had the, well, it came around 2016, had the great idea of, of trying to um, achieve the the most consecutive um, number of iron distance triathlons on English soil uh, and doing some research we found out that nobody had done seven at that time on English soil um, so we've got to be specific an English man on English soil completing seven Ironmans in seven days um, and that was the picture on day five when I was sitting comfortably at 80 kilos still looking semi-happy broken a little bit but loving every minute of it and uh, my wingman Mike uh, did not leave me for a minute of those 112 miles of bike every single day up until the Saturday um, when things things changed quite dramatically for Mike. Um, he would I know for a fact he would have seen me through till the very last day, but um, due to um, unforeseen personal issues, uh, Mike wasn't able to continue with me. And I can tell you right now that obviously what Mike went through during those last couple of days eclipsed anything that I went through, his, his own personal things they had to go through what a difference it made for me psychologically not having him there um it's 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 amazing how people can lift you up um but that was probably one of the last smiles mike um it was one of the last smiles if i'm honest with you until i went over the finish line on on day seven at the outlaw um but yeah what great memories oh thank you uh lindsay managed to get there for a bit of day six i think 
and then I managed to whiz down to watch day seven, which was fantastic. Yeah, yeah which which will uh, never be forgotten because I know I know I know what you what you were going through at the time. Um, yeah, just just people people are wonderful. Yeah. So um, let's crack on. Um, I think Zoom boots you out after um, forty minutes or something, but we have um, we've. Um, spent a quid or two and we've managed to upgrade so if we do spill over we'll, we, we won't be booted out yeah um, i think they've i think they've extended it anyway to be oh, honest with you like, yeah i don't i think they have i, I don't well, try to get my money it. back then you paid the bill <laughs> <laughs> yes, you paid the bill <laughs> um if somebody's on a handheld they won't be able to read any of this because there's far too much information on this slide and we've probably got far too much information to cram into 30 minutes but let's give it a whirl um motivation during lockdown swimming in lockdown immune health um adjusting your plan during lockdown nutrition hydration and right at the end um for everyone who's born with it right to the end of free performance enhancing uh, top tip which will reduce your injuries by 55% and hopefully uh, reduce your fatigue and increase aerobic performance by 10% so that can't be bad. Um, we're going to have a little quiz at the end as well and um, anyone who gets the right answer first will get a bit of a prize as well. So that's what we're aiming to get through. Um, First slide there, motivation during lockdown. I was, well, I am on quite a few different um, triathlon pages on Facebook and there were rumblings of a lockdown and then the, the events started to be cancelled. Uh, and I was amazed at how many people were just pressing the stop button and saying, right, that's it, um, you know, I'm done. I'm not going to carry on with my training and they're cancelling this different things left, right and centre. So I guess one of my first questions to you, Matt, for, for athletes in general, is do you have any top tips on motivation during lockdown? How, how do you keep people kind of focused? Well, I think there's, 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 a, lot of, um, there's a lot of different reasons why people do, um, race or train, a lot of different reasons. And, um, you know, back in the early days of, of being a coach, I... It's quite linear with you with my my view on 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 how to get people to um you know to to train and race and do their best and it was very much goal driven it was about you know find your goal find your goal find that race find that you know that, that particular race of the season and that isn't enough for a lot of people i think that's the that's the easy the easy win and it probably covers about 70 percent of people to say if, if you are motivated towards a goal be it a to complete a race do better in that race than you did in the previous season I think that's the that's the easy one, and I think our audience tonight that's that's an easy one for them. You know, enter the race, um, uh, or whether it's raising money for charity, they're all very different. But it's a goal; it's a very very much a goal-driven um, um, you know sort of approach, and I think that that will help people. Something that uh, something you 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 did for me a number of years ago, Mike, that um, that really worked for me, and it's and I've, and I've talked about it to other people as well outside of the forum of. Um, triathlon that I work with a lot of children I work with a lot of children that are disadvantaged and have you know some that have mental health and behavioral issues and stuff like that and to talk about this concept of a dream board about the big picture um you know sort of like trying to trying to quantify what it is that that, that you want out of life you know this big picture this goal this 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 dream moving forward and whether that's you know for, for, for me and what you helped me create a long time ago was literally a, a board a board of of, of images that, that helped me um, motivate me without having to question too deeply why am I doing this and you know it was it was it was it was hanging up my G, GB jersey it was pictures of my kids it was um, I don't know if you remember this conversation a long time ago which which came true which was um, Disneyland Disney World do you remember this that was one of the first conversations that we had and Lindsay might remember this I wanted to take my children to, to Disneyland you know working harder and pushing myself and keeping myself going um, that was one of those things on this dream board and the reason why I don't think that comes back comes back to the word goal is slightly different because I don't truly believe that the word motivation is the word that, that we should be using all the time because if you ask certain people, the word motivation is quite pseudo. It's, it's, it's not a realistic term. 
you know what I mean? That we, we were people that work through, humans work through a set of, of um, you know, we work through a, a set of different circumstances moving from one to the next. And, and sometimes um, and not, having, not having the goal, if we didn't have the goal, we might just knock it out of bed on a the, on the morning. But if you think about like our job, getting up in the morning and going to, going to, going to work, you know, although it pays the bills, there's, there's no one specific goal at the end of it. You know, we're not motivated by that goal or that, that word. So I think um, trying try to retrain your brain as well and, and looking at things like self-discipline. And um, the, don't worry too much about the motivation. Start thinking about areas of your life where you're self-disciplined. Um, that we are self-disciplined to get up in the morning and go to work and get a wash and do all the things that we need to do. And we're self-disciplined um, in our behaviours and we're self-disciplined, you know, in how we raise our children. Um, so motivation is one of those those pseudo things. So goals is one of them. Dream boards is another one that I would I would talk about. Um, having having a reason, your reason why. Coming back to that simple word why, and it may not be a goal. It may not be a goal. Um, you know, um, James is a, is a really good example here. That he's, 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 um, I hope he doesn't mind me saying about his his, um, his sort of like physical health and his mental health over over a number of years of, of being like a roller coaster for for. Um, for James and he you know he knows there's a big link between his, his physical health and his mental health and I had a really good chat with him today and he, and he's, 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 he's just absolutely flying it's like you Mike he's absolutely flying um, so his reason why you know for, for why he is moving forward with his, 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 his racing goals and his training goals or to keep motivated is, is that balance that balance in his life and um, that works for him um, one, one thing, Matt, you talked about moving towards whether it's a goal or a dream or a, that you've got a direction towards things. Um, and I guess when the, the races were cancelled, for a lot of people, for that 70% that you, you kind of notionally talked about, uh, that reason to move towards something was taken away. Now, the, there's also that 30% of people who are motivated away from what they don't want um and i think that's maybe what kicked in for me was yes the towards goal had been taken away but there was no way i was gonna stop training um might modify my training we'll come on to that but there's no way i was going to stop training because i'd worked so blooming hard for three years i didn't want to lose what i'd already gained so there is for, for some people, I think that that kind of fear of of losing something as well as moving towards something. Is that something that you recognize more in some people than others? Absolutely. And in myself as well. Uh, you, you know, that I had really big goals this this year um, to try to achieve four Ironmans in three days across four countries. Um, you know, um, and I can I can completely um, empathise with those people where their goals are taken away and it's all or nothing. A lot of, a lot of triathletes are very much all or nothing. Um, and, and how easy it is to just go, well, what's, what's the point? What's the point? And I, and I have I've had athletes um, come to me and said, I'm, I'm just going to have to put it all to bed and try again next year. I'll tick over for now. Um, so so yeah, we we, we have to have to recognise that, that this lockdown has done that for, for a lot of people um, and that there is that that need like you said like you've just said there to to at least start with am I able to readjust am I re- able to readjust my training am I able to readjust my goals um, you know realistically is can I get something out of the season and that's what we've tried to offer you know athletes is another way of thinking yeah like yourself you know we've talked about right well and, and, and this suits you really well because of your mentality how about we take this as that opportunity where everybody else is doing 10% less and you do that 10% more then come the late season uh, races, which are we start to come out now. You know, we're seeing, we're seeing world and European qualifiers as early as October now. Well, some people have already went, oh, you know, I've sat around for the last six, eight weeks and I've put on a bit of weight and I'm, I'm not ready for them, which is, you know, it's an opportunist's, um, you know, dream really, you know, that there are going to be people who, who are going to succeed because they've, they've used this to their advantage. Yeah. Most people that, that haven't, there are, there are lots of things that we can continue talking about now for how they can still get the best out of this. I mean, there, there is, 
there's no two ways about it. We have to readjust. We have to re uh, focus. We, we, we've got to relook at uh, ways of training, specifically swimming, but even bike and run, um, in terms of looking at le levels of intensity, um, look at levels of duration. We, we, we couldn't possibly be um, responsible and train the way that we, we have been doing. Uh, my belief is that there are people that are putting themselves in danger, um, especially on a level to do with their, you know, their immune systems. So that's something we'll probably come on to at the moment. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, there's very much two schools of thought. One, monopolize it, use it, be an opportunist. Or two, we, we can readjust. I have fell foul of, of the, the third one, which is, what's the point? I have. Um, um, and it happened for a couple of weeks where everything was taken away from me. There was just absolutely no way on earth was I going to be able to fulfill my dream this, this, this year. Not least the fact that we couldn't move from country to country freely. We couldn't move around our own country freely. And when you're looking at ultra endurance, which is what I was looking at, you know, sometimes four, five, six hour sessions back to back over two days, uh, what we call back-to-back -back sessions of four runs in one day. It, it, it's not healthy. It's not healthy if you've got this risk of this this um, this illness which affects your re respiratory system. It, it's not healthy. So I, I knew my hands were tied, but I've had to readjust. I've had to readjust and look at a, at a, at a different way of doing it, um, which I think is possibly the best way of doing it, really, the most healthy way. Cool. So um, we've got a picture of a swimmer in a skip. Um, so if you don't have um, a 20 foot long skip or a 20,000 K swimming pool in your back garden, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of triathletes are kind of worried about how to keep things going. I know I am. I'm, I came to swimming late and, um, get quite anxious about swimming. So the sort of regularity of going was a good discipline for me. Um, so when the pools closed, um, freaking out a bit, but um, any top tips for people like me? <laughs> well, this is a, this is actually an Irish athlete. This picture is a is a professional. All right, so he he has he has to. This is this is his livelihood. So yeah. where we can where we can kind of turn around and go, I'll, I'll find some dry land ways of yeah. you know um, of, of keep myself going. There's, there's talk of various races continuing for for the pros. It won't be a pretty thing to watch. Um, you know, there won't be any people lining the streets. But we do know that some of the professional athletics, like some of the marathons, will continue. Um, um, so, so this is kind of a necessity for this guy. He's got to find, you know, he's got to push himself that extra bit further. This alone has its own worries um, because, you know, we're looking at things like stagnant water. Is the water being treated? Is it safe? Um, in, in that respect, so that that throws up its own problems. I've seen lots of videos of people with you know um, small paddling pools and doing some um, some resistance band training. It, it, it's it's all great, but we we're not going to get quality training out of that. Um, it'll only take up a small percentage of what we can do. And I think in a lot of respects, it just gives us that little bit of a smile on our face that we're making the effort. We're doing something different. Um, so. It, it, it's um, it's great for some, but it's it's not really applicable to most of us. Um, I wouldn't have the space to, for that. I did try it a couple of years ago. Or if you remember, I tried to build my own yeah. pool. Um, and the, and the, the realistic nature of it is, most of us can't build pools in our back garden and it just leaks everywhere, which is what mine did. But are, are there things we can do? Um, and should we worry as much um, if we're already good swimmers? Uh, yes, there are things we can do. And no, we shouldn't worry as much so I'll talk about the, the, the worrying first. Um, there's a guy that I used to swim with. Um, he's called Steve Wilson, and he was uh, like a, a county-level swimmer in his teens, um, found rugby in his late teens, stopped swimming completely, came to triathlon in his late 20s, slightly overweight, and got in the pool and floundered around for the first couple of sessions like a beached whale and was, thought he was going to embarrass himself. And I, and I kid you not, within three weeks, he was, he was holding the 115, 120 easily, reps over a 3K set, and it all just came back to him. It all came back to him. Yes, his swim fitness took a bit of time to come back, but his, his, his prior knowledge of, of good technique, his innate, his body awareness, his muscle memory, it all came back to him. So I think that's the worry of a lot of people. They're going to forget how to swim. They're going to forget the, you know, the biomechanics and the good you know, swim strategies that they've learned over possibly many years. And most of the people on our forum, triathletes have done this for many years. 
then that, that's all going to come back. Absolutely. Can, can we underpin that with good dry land work? Absolutely. So there's the opportunities. Um, I, I've, I, I've posted various things on my, my um, athlete page. So we, obviously we've got a, an athlete page that I share things with. More than, more than happy to make them public. I share them if people want them. Um, but yes, our, our, our core work specifically and our upper body strength work that can be done um, as part of our daily planning, 15, 20 minutes or as a more structured set for an hour, two or three times a week. And I know that we've worked on both of those, Mike. We've worked on that, that basic core strength, which you've continued through. And then we've looked at very swim specific upper body and core work, which, which is a really serious workout. You can, you can be quite tired from this, this work. And a lot of it is, is um, either body strength or band work. And I think that's the best way of doing it. So we don't overload. So, so, so yes is, is the answer to, to, to those. Yes, we, 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 we can find ways of, of, um, of training at home. And when, I, when I've shared a lot of the stuff, um, and I've, and I've, and some of it's been quite fun, and I'll, I'll let the, our audience know if some of them were, I was trying to think outside the box of ways to, to strengthen the upper body with just what we have at home. So um, at the time, we weren't even sure whether we were going to get Amazon to deliver things. So I was like, right, let's just use what we've got at home. Um, Every triathlete's got an inner tube. Every triathlete's got a spare inner tube lying around which can replicate um, you know, work done with a resistance band quite easily. Um, that was one thing. And I'm sure every triathlete's got a bike. And we figured out that there was a way of, of doing um, upper body strength work with a bike flipped upside down with the front wheel taken off and, and actually using it as a, as a hand bike. So, so, th so there are opportunities. It's forgive the word, mongrelized. It's not, it's not a perfect strategy as we know, but it can be done. It can keep you motivated. It can keep you self-disciplined to keep your, your swim training going. It can be quite fun. Uh, um, obviously, I shared a video with you guys of me trying to use a bike as a hand bike. Um, it did work. I was tired at the end of it. It did look ridiculous, um, but it's, it, it's, it served its purpose. Um, but I, I would say as well that, you know, that a lot of our triathletes come through is, is, is saying that swimming is their weakest point anyway. And, and I'm also a believer that a lot of age groupers become better swimmers because of their fitness and their strength. And they never truly get that, um, uh, that level of coaching as you have, Mike, from the likes of Morg and, and myself and, and lots of swim videos and master sessions you've gone to. They don't. They, they, they plod up and down the, the, the lanes for hours and hours and hours. And the, and the improvements they make are in their swim fitness and their strength and their conditioning, which all of these exercises will improve. So they will possibly be, come out as slightly stronger swimmers. What we would say then is on top of that, you get your swim analysis, you improve your technique on, on top of that, that fitness, and then your pool time. So, so all's not lost, not at all. Good. Don't just go and rush out and fill a skip with bin bags and, <laughs> and try and think that's going to So what you're saying is swimming is like riding a bike. It's going to come back to me. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, it will. It will. It absolutely will. You know, for, for a new triathlete coming in, I would say that you underpin what you, the work you're going to do later when you get into a pool. Um, with that strength and conditioning, especially looking at the major muscle groups in the shoulders and the back of the neck, um, you don't need to lift weights. You know, endurance training and strength training can be done with body weight or resistance bands. You yeah. don't need to do any more than that. Reps are relatively short. Sessions are relatively moderate. Um, but those people who swam a lot, it'll come back. Absolutely yeah. come back. In, in some respects, given, I always say this as well, and I think it's counterintuitive, but given that body, that time to, to, to heal a cross swim bike and run, it does all of us good. It does all of us good. Yeah. Now... Immune health is obviously kind of in everyone's minds at the moment. And um, we won't get political because we'll never get off. But um, I have to say I've been a bit disappointed with the, the level of um, public health information mm. on immunity. Basically, we've been told to stay in, keep a distance, wash your hands. And that's the only information we've been given. Um, with my physiotherapy hat on, you've got most of the population working from home and there's going to be an epidemic of, of, of back pain because they're all sitting at home in the sofa using the laptop. There's been no information about posture. There's been no information about how to support your immune system. Um, they've flagged up, obviously, that if you are immunosuppressed, 
it's really, really important and you're, you've got to be extra, extra careful. Uh, but what they haven't done is, is the flip side of the coin and said, what you can actually do positively for your immune system. Um, now, you know, there's not heaps of time to go into this, but sleep is a major thing. Um, getting good quality sleep, getting the right quantity of sleep. Um, we know that your 70% of your capacity to generate your immune defenses occur in your gut. So having healthy gut flora is really, really important. Um, we know when the lockdown was coming, the, the shelves were emptied of flour, pasta, bread, stodge, basically um, calories, but it wasn't, people weren't rushing for, you know, um, nutri uh, nutrient rich food. You know, the, all the fruit and veg, you could get loads of it, but there's no direction about what you can actually do positive to support your health. And we'll touch on that maybe a bit more later. But from a training point of view, um, do's and don'ts in terms of your immune health. Uh, have you any kind of thoughts on that? Yeah, well, well you know, um, most of the athletes that, that come on now are, are, are potentially not going to push themselves like pros um, into the areas where, you know, that, that, that there is that real concern that the, the stress levels they're putting themselves through physically and on a, on a metabolic level um, are going to create major issues for them, especially if they're, they're doing um, sort of like short distance um, races. But when you move up the way and you start doing sort of like your, your older distance, your half iron and your iron distance triathlon, um, there, is, there is that risk. There is that risk that the training itself, just the training itself, can, can be what invites in that, that illness because we do become, um, you know, um, immunosuppressant isn't the right word, but we do lower our immunity. We, we, we invite in those illnesses. And it's, it's you know, it's a, an anecdotal uh, myth about um, triathletes having, constantly having colds, constantly having upper uh, respiratory tract issues um, beca because that's, you know, that's, the, that's what happens with um, that style of training. How to administer that? There's there's actually conflicting information, and having really good uh, discussions and debates. And one that um, that Lee Evans has sort of done some research into as well. And he he'll tell you himself that there's there's varying conflicting um, ideas on how we how we actually administer to that. What I've had to do as a coach because of that is seek that information and find out what is the what is the most important thing I can do because I don't want to give him misinformation, especially when it comes to nutrition and and might you know yourself that as individuals. You know, we can talk about giving certain people extra iron or certain people extra vitamin C, but some people can't because of their, you know, their own metabolic makeup and, you know, their own history. What we, what we do know is that in times like these, to support our immune system is a good healthy diet, like you've said. It's not the stodge. It is making sure you've administered to that, to that um, you know, those, those micronutrients that, that we're at def you know, most of us have got a deficit in. And even if that, it does come down to a multivitamin or, you know, just topping up on certain things. For me, I, I had to relinquish my own ultra distance training because it did concern me that that would lower my immunity. And I've had to sort of say that to a lot of my athletes that, you know, you can continue training for Ironman at the end of the season if you want to as hard as you want to. But I, I feel that it could be a little bit irresponsible to the detriment of your own health because we know we do break down. And a lot of athletes, um, only pull back on the training when they see those signs of overtraining. You know, it's it's like it's like pulling pulling teeth trying to get some athletes to have that reticence, that knowing when to pull back. We call it the three one three principle, where we will have reduced training or really formal um, recovery times. And although they're telling me they're doing it, they're not. It's, they just like to train through until they hit a wall, until it all comes crashing down, until there's an injury. And at that point. You know, um, the stress levels are, are up there. Your body's breaking down. And as a, as a coach, I had to turn around and say, I'll support and coach you. And I'll, I will, you know, give you what you need in that sense. But my, my underlying principle is we've got to take care of ourselves at this time. You yeah. know, um, I'm in triathlon for the long term. So if we've got to put a, a one race to bed this season, then we'll, we'll, we'll revisit that next season. And I have no qualms in saying that whatsoever, that if you're pinning everything on 2020 to the detriment of your own health, I think that's, uh, 
I, I'm not your coach if that's the if that's the way it is. And I've always said that. I've been very candid about that. I'm not in for a quick win. I'm in it first to support an athlete in the long term, whether it's as a coach or a mentor or as a friend. Um, that's why I won't smash an athlete in one season for some ten hour Ironman. It's like we we we, we build responsibly. We've got to be responsible with nutrition, responsible with sleep, responsible with stress scores, which we've got up here we're talking about pushing ourselves and knowing our limits. Um, so yeah, we, if we can't if we can't recognise it in ourselves, and you can't take that advice from a coach, then sadly some people are gonna you know they're gonna they're gonna break down in training, they're gonna hit the wall and potentially invite illness and, and things in. So so yeah, good sleep, good training habits, good nutrition. And talk to somebody like yourself, and, and you know, I mean, so everyone's listening now. I take my advice from you in regarding nutrition. I come to you and ask you, you know, uh, with your many years of experience, what, what am I missing? What are my athletes missing? Can you talk to somebody and say, this is their diet? What are they missing? What, 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 what's potentially going to help them and support them in their training and racing? It's, it's having those conversations because I realized that, you know, something very simple that I have such a low level of vitamin C in my system. I really, really low, ridiculous. Even, even taking the supplements that I take, I wasn't taking enough. So I've, I've started taking in, um, you know, something very similar like Morocco, you know, the effervescence. Um, so that's me on a personal level. I'm talking to someone like yourself or me, Mike, each individual person listening tonight, even just with a quick conversation for 10, 15 minutes, we, we could identify areas on a nutritional level that they're perhaps missing that could support that immune system. And it can be transformative. We know this. It can transform. And there were certain things I started taking two or three years ago that we, we got unbelievable results from because I was completely deficient. I wasn't recovering properly. Um, and, and I think people need to think like that and have those conversations with more knowledgeable people. What am I missing? This is my diet. These are my um, supplements. This is my lifestyle. And then we can see this is my age. This is my medical history and, and it's, it's looking at themselves like that because as a coach your health and your well-being will always supersede your race results and you know I've had those tough conversations before with yourself and other people where I've said I'm, I'm stepping back because your health is more important to me than that goal your health is more important than that particular race so it's a conversation. What about HRV? Um, I know you you suggested I should monitor and I have done religiously for a couple of years now um do you think that's a, a good indicator of of recovery I, I think it's a i think it's a great tool if people don't have a lot of self-awareness it's a tool it's a tool it's a wonderful tool it's a very it's scientifically proven tool it's used by pros across the world I'll, I'll explain it very quickly to other people but it's it's like any other tool if it's used well it can really give you the benefits um, but having self-awareness alongside that is really, that's the key to me about any metric is using it as a guide, but then checking yourself alongside that and see if those things, those things um, sort of like marry up. So, so HRV is very simply, it's, um, it's, a, it's a scientific tool that, that measures the sympathetic, and para, sympathetic variability between heartbeats. Um, it's, it's, it's huge, but essentially we should have um, we should have a lot of variability between heart, heartbeats it's, and, and when, when we, are, um, we are stressed, when we are fatigued, when we are of ill health, when we are on the edge of, of, of pulley, um, when we have been sedentary for a long time, when there's, there's a number of these things that can give us what we call low HRV, which is a very stagnant and repetitive and um, what's the word, syncopated HRV which is not good. And it can identify that and just give you the heads up and say, you may not have noticed it. Yeah. Or you're not on form today and you might want to adjust your training, which is why we approach training like we do. Um, so not all coaches do this, but, but my coaching method is it's uh, reverse periodized. So across a year, we, we, we break down your training into your winter and your spring and your, and your build and your race phases. But within that, those, those blocks of training, which is normally a week for most people, they're plotted by you um, to suit your lifestyle um, each week differently because every week's different. Um, but HRV can have a big part in that. You may get to a Saturday, um, test your HRV on a Saturday morning and you were going to go out for a four-hour bike and it turns around and says, readjust your training. We know that that long training, even though it doesn't feel um, massively taxing, can take the most out of us 
in, in many levels and in, 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 in stress levels and lower our immunity and energy levels and all that sort of stuff. So you might want to replace that with a 45 minute hit session, which yeah. might tire us out massively, but it doesn't tend to have that lasting uh, impact on our um, uh, on our training. So so HRV, yeah, it's it's a wonderful little tool if used if used well. Yeah, we've touched on adjusting um, program. I guess is there anything quick and simple you could give people as some advice that say they haven't readjusted their a race goals for the year because they can't because they don't know what what's happening how do they kind of maintain what 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 should they do now if they're actually if they don't know what they're shooting for that's that's an interesting one isn't it because if this thing had happened in in the winter or the spring it would be a slightly different conversation because our because our whole training systems are different then they're less intense so yeah. It probably would be easier in the winter because most of us have got a turbo. And we've been given that license to go and run outside. And even though that's grey, you know, we've, we've heard it's an hour. We've heard you've, you've, got, to, um, you've got to exercise longer than the travelling it takes to get there. But I, I think safely to, to be able to go out for 90 minutes. I mean, some of our, some of our iron athletes are going out for you know, up to two hours. It's, it's all socially distanced. In the winter, that would be absolutely fine. Just almost say, crack on with your training. You know, don't worry yeah. about it too much. As it comes into the, the race phase, and, and the majority of our races are around, you know, for triathletes are around that sort of like June, July, August time, which is what we're heading towards now. And that training changes. It's, it's quite intense. It's quite intense and it's quite structured. And as, and as a coach, it's very personal as well. So how, how an individual builds into that across the different disciplines is very individual, but it's, it's taking you to kind of a knife edge, you know, as, as, as a coach, we're, we're trying to get you there. You know, if we're that 1% under, we've nailed it. If we're that 5% over, we're going to break it. You're not going to reach your goals. So that knife edge for coach and athlete is fairly stressful on a lot of levels. And it worries me and it worries me going to sleep on a night when I've got it right or wrong. Um, so I think that, that can be alleviated a little bit in terms of your own, mental approach you know that you don't have to be as fastidious and worried as 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 um as previous so i think that what we call maintenance you know we've we've gone through maintenance training before mike that's where all the all of the the i's are dotted and the t's are crossed and all the boxes are ticked you're going all right everything's going all right we don't want to break yet so why keep pushing why keep pushing i, I don't see the need for that yeah most athletes can have more than one peak in a season, more than one peak. And that's fairly healthy because it means we're not killing ourselves for any one particular race. So we always talk about A's and B's. So if we see this as kind of maintenance between races where we just want to maintain our health, and that, that's, that's maybe not a massive change in our, our training systems. It's a big change in our mentality. And that maintenance can, can yield the most wonderful results. Um, you know, one of my athletes told me the other day, he, just, he said, oh, do you know, I've, lived, I've just, I've got the highest FP, FTP I've ever done before. Um, and I said, have you changed this? Have you changed that? Have you changed this? And no, I've not changed anything. And I said, well, the only thing that's changed is, you know, there's no goal coming at the end. You've just relaxed into it. You know, you've, you've just, everything just seems to be a little bit more, you know, as it comes, so to speak. And it can yield wonderful results. So I think the, what I'm saying there is don't, don't, don't kill yourself. Don't kick yourself. I think structure is important. I think keeping keeping um that 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 you know maintenance going is really important but um be kind to yourself is what i was what i'm saying you can take that that, that mentality mentality out of it and that's a, that's a that's a stress level dropped for starters and that's healthy it improves sleep it improves your approach to your to your own training and one of the most important things that people don't talk about is it improves the perception of your own perception of effort does that make sense uh go for it again <laughs> so so rpe the rate of perceived exertion is yep. our own our own minds we, we call it one to ten the bog scale it's our yep. own our own mind telling us that that's a 10 out of 10 and that's how much that hurts and um, that's a five out of ten and that's how much that hurts and uh, we always come back to that because it's, it's, it's probably one of the best um, modes to use to to gauge ourselves because other methods can as we don't fall foul of them going wrong but if we, are, if we are chasing something and it can become heavy or negative or a worry, then the perception of that effort will be harder. So, so what, how much a 10 out of 10 feels when it means so much 
um, can mean that we, we can't access, um, you know, we can't go higher or, or we, we don't feel positive about it. But when our perception of that effort is more positive because we're not quite as stressed or worried, we can actually push higher and it doesn't feel as bad. It doesn't, feel, it doesn't hurt as much. Yeah, that's, that's the point yeah. I'm making. Yeah, so yeah. so our, our 10 out of 10 can become 11 out of 10, if that makes sense. So our yeah. 10 meaning, you know, max effort. We, we can almost create a new scale of perception because our mind allows us to do that. It's a, it's a nicer feeling. You know, when we're, when we're laughing up a hill and following a mate and it all feels fun and great, we can push harder, it doesn't feel as bad. But when you're told, you know, if you don't get to the top of that hill, you're going to lose this race and you're going to fall down the rankings, it doesn't feel quite as nice and potentially we don't do as well. Yeah. Tell you what, um, we're running... We're talking quite a lot. We're doing okay. We're on about 45 minutes. You need a drink of tea. Um, ice, ice cold now. Ice cold tea. Um, thought, oops, we might have a look at the, the master, Patrick Langer, um, hydrating and fueling. Wow, that's a unbelievable clip. It's like poetry, absolute yeah. poetry. Um, we we haven't got time to go into kind of macro diets and stuff. We both gone plant based. What five months ago? Mm. We, we're we're coping okay. Um, it doesn't. It's not, been as, it's not been as easy in lockdown. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I've, <laughs> I've had to become a, a bit of a part time. Um, a flexitarian. Well, I'm still doing really well. I'm very proud of myself. My wife even said to me today she's really proud of me. Um, yeah. But the, uh, the VE Day celebrations is going to be a, a barbecue. And I've got to cook the barbecue. So I, I, I might struggle on that day. Yeah. Um, probably we should move on. And um, yeah, can, can I just say very, very quickly on this, the, 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 the hydration, what, what you're talking about yeah. there is, again, it is so specific and individual. You, you, you give me a man or a woman, you give me a 20 year old or a 40 year old, you give me someone who's doing a sprint for the first time, and it's going to take an hour and a half. You give me someone who's doing a sprint, you can do it under an hour. You give me an iron athlete or a 70.3 athlete, you give me someone who's racing in May as opposed to racing in July, and you give me someone who's racing in this country as opposed to Barcelona, and it's absolutely bespoke their, their entire plan and their race plan before, during, after. It's, it's a conversation that's almost impossible to have um, unless we know who the individual is and what they're doing and why. It's so, it's so specific. There's so much goes into it. Yeah. So that's, um, another, that's another webinar, Mike. That's a, that's it a is another webinar. webinar. Or, or personal conversations, like we say, we're both open to having those conversations with people. If We've we got ask. to have something to look forward to. Yes. Um, on just on hydration again, I, I listened to a webinar Lindsay did last night, and I think um, for me the key to hydration is is not just what you take during and what you take after. It's being well hydrated before you set off, and I don't think people drink enough day to day. Um, there's various calculations you can do, but one of the best I've come across, particularly for the people who are kind of numbers orientated, is that for uh, every calorie consumed, you should consume a milliliter of fluid. So if you're on a two and a half, um, two and a half thousand calories a day, you should be on two and a half thousand uh, milliliters of fluid on top of which you need to take the fluid you, you, you're, you're, you're using during exercise, which can be anything between 500 and 1,000 per hour, depending on the athlete, or, or more depending on conditions. Um, so I yeah. thought that was quite an interesting calculation. It, it is, and, and, and I think I come back to, I mean, the, these, you know, be, being so specific in the schools of thought about sweat rate and all that sort of stuff to go into it, it, it all has to be underpinned by these good habits in the weeks and days leading up. Absolutely. Whether it's a sprint or, a, or an iron distance, the, the, the habits leading up to that, you know, we, we, we have um, carb loading strategies and we have hydration loading strategies, you know, looking at all the micro and macronutrients that, that are needed to, to get you in the right place because it can all go wrong on race day because of what you've done in the weeks leading up. And in fact, I would even argue that in, in a lot of race scenarios, and if you've got all of that right um, in the weeks leading up, 
you can kind of get it wrong on the day. You can get it, you know, you can be you can be quite lucky and get away with stuff. I remember Dowie telling me about um, doing the outlaw a few years ago and 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 what little nutrition he used and and how he really focused on on the the hydration. And it, I was actually I was absolutely quite gobsmacked about what little he took in um, and what his hydration was like. Absolutely bang on, and yes, he was using he was using uh, RG as, as one of his main um, sources to make sure he was getting uh, various uh, things into him. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's the days and weeks. It's the conversations with your coach and the knowledgeable people about what you should be doing in the lead up, um, and then looking at your race day strategy as well. Supplementation really is, from my point of view, icing on the cake. Um, always been coached by you to take a kind of food first approach and then supplements are really the, the clues in the name they supplement what what you're taking day to day um, on the immune health side of things um, the science tells us that zinc vitamin d vitamin c really important um, from a kind of Chinese medicine point of view, they, they also talk about a couple of mushrooms, the shiitake mushroom and the maitake mm. mushroom. Yeah. All those in the immune support product called Immune Blend from Forever. So if people want any more info, give you a shout, give me a shout, give Louise a shout, whoever. Um, Pre-session, pre-race, uh, I'm big on RG, which is an allarginine-based product um, for people who know nothing google around the topic of um, l-arginine nitric oxide or even google the miracle molecule you'll get mm. some really good information about how it relaxes smooth muscle how it encourages blood flow getting oxygen and nutrients to the exercising muscles yeah. you could also put rg in the after category because recovery is key um, and if you're improving circulation you're going to be whisking away those waste products and, and helping with recovery as well um, q10 uh, neutral q10 is a bit of a, a novel one um, basically q10 is required to stick the third phosphate back on adp adenosine diphosphate becomes ATP, adenosine triphosphate, um, because of Q10 bonding. Now, aerobic respiration, which is what we're, we're, we're using for long distance activity, uh, I think it goes back to the Krebs cycle. I'm a little bit rusty on my biology, but we need to replenish ATP all the time to keep on going. So Q10, I'll whack in a bottle with um, a homemade isotonic drink. I use a third of a litre of orange juice, two thirds of a litre of water, um, and then either put in a pinch of salt, which equates with an eighth of a gram, or usually I'll put in a, an SIS electrolyte tablet and a Nutri-Q10, and that's my kind of during fluid. Um, and then as soon as you get home, we've got that 20 minute window to get um, your protein in. You've got a two hour window to get your carbohydrates in. Um, so usually I'll go for ultralight. You get 24 grams of protein. Um, I'll sometimes put in something called super greens, which is loaded with magnesium, which helps with tiredness, fatigue, recovery as well. Um, so those are four uh, four products there's masses more we know aloes are prebiotic we know probiotics really important for immunity as well any of those products there um, speak to us and happy to give you a bit more information mm -hmm. which brings us hurtling along to uh, our final slide um, and this I picked up on this only really really recently uh, Lindsay, my wife, is a prolific reader. She's always got something uh, on the go. And she was reading one book for, for ages. I don't know if she's rereading it or if she's just rereading passages, but she's reading it for ages. Um, and then she flagged up a couple of chapters for me to look on, which was to do with sports performance. Um, 
And I read three pages of this book um, and it's written by a chap called Matthew Walker, uh, originally from Nottingham. Uh, he's now the professor of neuroscience, psychology and director of sleep. It's a big name badge um, at the University of California. And he's reviewed all the literature on one topic. Um, and a few bullet points here. Um, if you're able to reduce your fatigue by 10 to 30 percent, increase your aerobic output by 10 percent, improve your body's cooling abilities, um, your strength on your vertical jump, improve lactic acid dis dissipation, and reduce your chance of injury by 50 percent. And it was a free uh, performance enhancing hack. Um, I thought most people would be quite keen to know what it was. Um, I don't know if you know, Matt, don't blurt it out if you do. No, so this part, I've read something, there's parts of this that I've read in a study, and okay. I, for the life of me, I can't remember what it was, but okay. I absolutely, the vertical, the vertical jump, it absolutely stands out in my mind as something that I've, that I've read. Okay, so now is competition time. What I'm going to do is open the chat box, and the first person to pop in chat um, if you can find your chat box. First person to um, put in the right answer about what this free hack is uh, will get a free product of their choice. Any of the products that we've talked about tonight, uh, you can win if you can guess what this um, hack is. So I'll give it a few seconds. I think I, I, think I know what it is now. Do you? Yeah. Okay, you can't do. win. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just message you personally and I'll tell you if I think that's what it is. Oh, we've got two come in now. Now, the first answer that came in, in fact, we've Wait, got two just... correct answers, but the first one that came in was actually James Marsden. And uh, the correct answer is sleep. Um, the correct answer is actually, oh, you, you've won, James. Um, and Fiona, you've come a close second. But <laughs> James, eight hours sleep or more, and all of these, um, all of these facts can be uh, verified verified by science. Um, and I think it's hugely, hugely underestimated the power of sleep, both for the immune system, recovery, performance, um, your state of mind. Uh, Lindsay was talking about two very, very interesting chemical compounds which your body produces. Uh, one is called leptin, one is called ghrelin. Now, if you get less than six hours sleep a night, which a lot of people have been doing on lockdown, uh, they've been going to bed late and they've been getting up early and their sleep's been all over the place, leptin um, falls with reduced sleep and leptin tells you when you're satiated it tells you when you're full so that drops if your your sleep drops below six hours a night ghrelin is a chemical in your body that tells you when you're hungry now that actually increases when you have less than six hours sleep a night so if you're regularly having less than six hours sleep a night, you feel you, you aren't getting the chemical indicators telling you that you're full, but you've actually got more chemicals telling you that you're hungry. So it's a double whammy. So the government are telling us that we're less mobile, that we're probably burning less than 400 calories than normal every single day. Um, but we're eating more and we feel less full. So basically this is a recipe for people putting on weight during lockdown with odd sleep patterns. So I'm gonna start a bit of a challenge. I don't know how or where I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna try and get people to commit to eight hours sleep a night for a one week period and get people seeing how they feel, how they perform, if they're less grumpy, um, all sorts of things. Um, Mike? Yo. 
Mike, there's a there's um if if people would like to listen to a really good podcast, yeah. Um, there's a um, I don't know how, how else to get this. There's a there's a podcast um, app called Podbean, and on there there's a um, there's a triathlon coach called Simon Ward, who yeah. was actually a triathlon 220 coach of the year several times over. He's quite well known um, in in the um, uh, triathlon circles in our country, and he's done a number of um, a number of um, podcasts. Uh, with like specialists, and one of one of them is about a sleep, a sleep specialist. So he's done a, he's done a whole a whole podcast about sleep hygiene, about improved sleep for triathletes. Um, so it's a free, it's free to download, it's free to listen to, and it's called Swat in a Circle, Simon Ward. And it's on Fantastic, the brilliant. Well, we have taken an hour of people's time. Um, if people want to get hold of you, Matt, um, how would they do that? I'm more than happy to, to, to talk. I, I always say to anybody, if, if, if a question is asked, it requires an answer. Therefore, it's something that can help you. Um, and my, my door is open to anyone for, for any question, any time. Um, I, I don't think my my uh, Facebook is locked down. So it's Matt Turnbull, um, Forever Try, it says on there. But also, if you type in Forever Try UK into Facebook, you'll come to my team page anyway. So it's my open team page. And I'm happy to take any um, any question whatsoever on any of the topics tonight, if I can support in any way. Um, it always concerns me that a, you know that a, a, an answer not given is a barrier that someone's going to come, come up against that you could quite easily have solved um, and support them, help them move on. You know, I've seen it too many times, people holding things to themselves um, to the detriment of somebody else, and it's, um, it's it worries me that actually that mentality. Yeah. So ask away anything you possibly can. Most sure. of it I'll probably bounce back to you, Mike, if it's about nutrition, but <laughs> um, but I'm happy to help. We've got uh, a thank you from James. Um, from James, he also says, Simon Ward's podcast on sleep. Very good listening. Uh, Lindsay is saying that it's uh, the prefrontal cortex of your brain is impaired with less sleep. So our ability to make rational judgment is lowered, which means we reach for rubbish. Interesting point. Um, any immediate questions that people want to ask if if people want to go feel free to go i won't take any offense but if anyone's got any burning questions they want to ask now just pop them in chat if not we'll probably wrap up in the next kind of uh minute or so thank you from fiona and simon um any other questions no, i think uh richard buell thanks guys all interesting stuff so I think it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. <laughs> Thank you. We should have rehearsed that, Matt. We should have um, done. We should have done. It's been brilliant. Uh, thanks, Amanda, for tuning in as well. She's just said goodbye. Um, we'll try and do a recording of this and get it edited down and in a form that can be shared. So thanks for everyone for turning up and um, keep on training. Thank you. Take care, Matt. Thanks. Bye now. Bye.